Another terrible day in Wall Street as sausage futures plummet 514 points to an all-time low of negative 1,000. The president tweeted today, quote, The king of Tonga is a bad hombre for allowing those possible criminals from Chibata to seek refuge there. Sad. Unquote. Since Chibata is a bread, his critics are confused and aggravated. The terrible puppy shaver has still not been caught in North Dakota. Locals are all... Yeah, what? What wrong? Oh, I don't know, Beakley. It's just it's Thanksgiving and don't think there's much to be thankful for. Thanksgiving? Yeah, it's when all of your friends and family get together and have a big feast and you tell everyone what you're thankful for this year. But everybody's out of town. The news is terrible, and I don't know, it just doesn't seem like there's a lot to be thankful for this year. You got big late! You're right, Beakley. I do have you. Yes. Got Beakley. Yay, Beakley! Yes, I'm thankful for you, and I'm thankful I'm an American. And you know what the best part about being an American is? Foot? Well, that. But also, we can do what we want to do, we can say what we want to say, and we can completely lose track of where our points were going. Foot! 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 Yes, and since I am a proud Southerner, I am not proud of being from the South because of systemic racism, whitewashing of history, the legally authorized mistreatment of ethnic and sexual minorities. I'm more of a proud Southerner because of people like Capote and George Washington Carver and R.E.M. and the B-52s and Ray Charles. I say I'm not going to make a turkey. That's for them Yankees. I'm going to make fried chicken sandwiches. And for those out there who want to say, be gone Macy's Parade, farewell football, and goodbye all the problems with the world for even just a fraction of a minute, I say, hey y'all, I'm Derek, and welcome to our Thanksgiving extravaganza, where we look at the great American studio, Troma. <laughs> Studios was founded by Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz in 1974. The two met while at Yale, where Kaufman was majoring in Chinese studies and Herz in law. And although they didn't get along well to begin with, both grew to love the film industry while at Yale and created Troma to produce and direct their own movies. Troma's original productions were sex romp comedies and mostly unnoticed by the mainstream. That is, until 1985's The Toxic Avenger, which became an almost instant cult classic, spawning three sequels, a cartoon spinoff, and a comic book series. In fact, Toxie, as fans call him, became such a cultural phenomenon as New Jersey's first superhero that he was even referenced in a mainstream Saturday morning cartoon. Unfortunately, Troma has suffered severe financial difficulties over the 40 years he has been producing films, and the stability of the studio was called into question after a video called Tales from the Crapper almost bankrupted the company. The film cost an estimated $250,000, but most of the film was completely unusable, forcing Kaufman to rewrite, reshoot, and restructure the entire film in hopes of recouping some of the budget. When the film was released in 2004, it flopped, barely making back a tenth of the budget. For their next production, Kaufman had to cash out his and his wife's retirement funds to come up with the capital, and the film was so shoestring, the entire cast and most of the crew was volunteer. 
Most of the special effects were made by donation, and personnel slept in an abandoned church rented out for the production and shot in a closed-down McDonald's. What's this movie I'm telling you about? Why, it's the movie we're covering today, of course. Poultrygeist, Night of the Chicken Dead. And since it is National Poultry Day across the country, and this movie is based in a chicken restaurant, I'm going to make southern style fried chicken sandwiches. Right now, I'm just preparing some chicken breasts. I'm cutting them in half, and then I'm pounding them until they're at equal length. That way, you ensure that they're going to fry evenly. So let's get started. Our film begins with two teenagers doing what teenagers do best, defiling a grave in an ancient Indian burial ground, which ironically looks like an ancient Christian burial ground, by bumping uglies before heading off to college. And this is where we get our first taste of Troma's traditional insensitivity. Wendy, my mom's a retard and my dad's blind. I mean, how am I supposed to take care of them if I'm off somewhere getting smart? Yeah, get used to that level of humor. It's about as high as it gets. So, cut to a semester later, where there's a protest outside a new fried chicken restaurant. And our hero, Arby, oh yeah, everyone's named after a fast food chain in this movie, finds out his girlfriend, Wendy, has gone full lesbian. And in protest, Arby decides to get a job at the chicken restaurant. And he expresses his thoughts in song. As Jesus said as he died, Yo, Biznet, please, revenge is a dish best served fried. Oh, did I forget to mention this is a musical? Yeah, this is a musical. We're watching a comedy horror musical about zombie chickens. God, I love trauma. Okay, so the chicken's prepared, so now we're just going to marinate it for about two hours. The marinade is very simple. It's just buttermilk, hot sauce, and my Cajun curry spice mix. Just put it in a bag, put the chicken in it, and then let it rest in the fridge for about two hours, rotating it halfway through. So, Arby goes in and meets the manager, Denny, a gay Mexican fry cook named Paco Bell. I never said the writing was clever a random employee named Carl Jr., and a Muslim woman named Hamas. It's not Hamas. It's Hummus. Like the dip. Hummus. Oh, sorry. Who wears a red burqa? So, Arby gets a job as a counter girl, complete with skirt, and the store opens up, and we are introduced to the owner of the company, General Lee. Lloyd Kaufman comes in, playing a veteran counter girl who's really pushing the point that Arby is just like him. And they argue about it in song. Around Arby, now haven't you heard? A career in fast food is like polishing turds. It may shine like a diamond or spark. So I found me a whore with a face just like yours after several gallons of porter. Well, Paco gets killed by falling into a meat grinder. And because of this event, personally, I fall in love with hummus. We never see her face, but her eyes are so emotive, you can just imagine the faces she's pulling under that hijab. And yes, this movie is gory, but truthfully, it's so fake looking, it probably will not turn your stomach if you're squeamish. It looks more like colored water. Okay, so now it's time to bread our chicken. As you know, in one bag we have our chicken with our marinade. In another bag, I just mix some flour in my Cajun mix by shaking it up a bit. So what we do, is take chicken from bag and put it into dry mix. Close it up and shake it until it's completely coated. Okay, so Paco's dead. Carl Jr. dies. Paco is turned into a haunted sandwich that the general eats and General Lee passes out free chicken to the protesters and Wendy's girlfriend Mickey takes up the call to eat it. It turns out Mickey worked for the general to get free advertising for the store because they desperately needed this scene. Well, people begin getting sick, which leads to Wendy forcing General Lee to eat some chicken, whereupon he gets sick and lays an egg in the toilet. Soon, 
everyone starts turning into chickens. God, this is just so stupid. It's so great. Well, General Lee turns into a giant egg, and hilarity ensues, including the death of hummus by drinking meat steroid. But just remember, she's a red shirt. Now let's fry these guys up. I'm using the deep fat fry method, but feel free to use the traditional pan fry me method. Okay, so they kill all the chicken zombies in the store and come up with a very creative way of keeping out the droves outside. So they try to look for an escape, but they get sidetracked when a woman comes around saying her daughter has gone missing, so they go looking for her. Well, a couple of chickens are still alive, and let the others in, where hummus comes back to life. See, when a red shirt dies, another takes its place. Well, our heroes get cornered in the basement and are kept in place by a musical number by a zombie chicken general who just blows up. Hummus throws off her burka, showing off she's a bikini model, who goes off to blow up the zombie hordes. Arby and Wendy escape with the little girl, who lays an egg, and leads to footage from another trauma movie, Sergeant Kabuki Man, where everybody dies. And the chicken is done. So we're just going to put it on a bun. I like mine with some mayonnaise, but you can dress yours however you want. And put a nice pile of fries by the side. So, final thoughts on the movie. There's basically two camps about trauma. You either like them or you don't. And that's just how they like it. This movie is as B as B movies get. It's made on 35mm film, and the quality is grainy and low budget. The writing is sophomoric, and if the humor was any more lowbrow, it would be a goatee. And as a musical, the pacing on the songs is all wrong. They happen spontaneously and not spaced evenly throughout the film. All in all, this movie has no reason to exist. But this movie is great because it's so low budget and low brow. All the arguments against it actually work in its benefit. The characters are caricature. The jokes are elementary. And honestly, it's a spectacle. It is gore-filled, but not in a squeamish way. It's one of those movies where everything that shouldn't work does. I definitely recommend this picture, as long as you're open-minded and realize it's supposed to be shocking and crude. Then you're in for a good time. So if you're looking for a low-key, unusual kind of Thanksgiving, grab some friends, grab this movie, fry some chicken, and turn the world off for a little bit. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in, have a happy Thanksgiving, and come back next week when we look at one of my favorite genres of film. Beakley, food's ready! Food! Bye, y'all.